Welcome back to my workshop. Now today is the next video in this series of videos about blade changes. And today we're going to change the blade in a coping saw. Let's have a quick look. Right, so first off, before we change the blade, uh, what is a coping saw? Now, this is uh, generally used in the woodworking world uh, for doing dovetail joints. Uh, okay, it's like a hacksaw, so like this junior hacksaw here, uh, but it's got a different throat, it's got a deeper throat. So if we look at this, this is about 120 mil throat, and this is only about 50, 55. Okay, so you wouldn't use one of these for making dovetails, but you would use one of these. Okay, so this is a coping saw. Now to avoid any confusion, uh, you can get another saw that looks very similar, but it's actually called a fret saw. Now, the main difference, okay, just in general terms, the main difference is the way that the blade is actually fixed to the saw. Okay, I'll cover that quickly in a minute. Uh, now, with this one, it's got a pressed steel uh, frame here. Now, these tend to be slightly stronger than the round bar type. So my preference is to use this pressed steel type. Okay, uh, you can get a little bit more tension on than you can with a round bar. Okay, so basically these are used for making dovetails. So let's change the blade. Okay, so as you can see, it's got a blade here. Uh, there's a nut on the end and you'd think that's what you use for removing and replacing the blade but it isn't. You actually use the handle, okay? And what you do is there's a tab here and one here. And when you're removing the blade, what you do is you hold this tab with your thumb, holding the frame with your fingers, and then loosen the handle, okay? Like this. And what that does is basically changes this distance, takes the tension off of there. Okay, you can see the threads appearing, which means the distance between here and here is getting shorter, which means the blade is then free to come out. Okay, simple as that. Oh, this blade's a little bit bent, but that doesn't matter because once it's under the tension, it straightens out again. Now, the difference I was saying between a coping saw and a fret saw is these fittings on the end here. Okay, on this one, which is a coping saw, it's got a pinned type blade but on a fret saw, you don't have that, uh, and it's actually clamped slightly differently. Okay, so that's how you get the blade out. Right, so we've got to order a new blade. Which one do we order? Okay, to order a new blade, what we need to know is the actual length of the blade. Okay, now obviously I've got rule here. Easiest way to do it is measure it. Now going from the end of the blade here, boing, going from the end of the blade to the other end, this actually measures 170 mil. Okay, but you may not be able to find a 170 mil blade, but you will be able to find 165 mil. Now the 165 is between this pin on this end and this pin on this end. Okay, so if we re-measure it from the pin to the pin, you can see it's now 165. Okay, so to avoid any confusion, that's the length of the blade you want to buy. Okay, uh, and the next thing is how many teeth you want. Yeah, it depends on what you're going to be cutting with it, uh, but that is measured in TPI. So let's quickly go over to the, uh, the board and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so the blade you want to get is normally shown in TPI, okay, which is teeth per inch. Okay, what does that mean? That means that for every inch, so if we measured an inch from there to there, for example, if that's an inch, one inch, okay, this distance, how many teeth has it got? One, two, three, four, five, five TPI. Okay, now I think my one that I've got there is 14 TPI. 14 TPI. Okay, and that's a good general purpose blade. Okay, obviously if you're cutting uh, harder woods, you may need more teeth per inch. 
uh, or if you're cutting really soft wood, you may need less. Uh, but that's a general good blade for my uses. Okay, obviously if you use too fine a blade, they can get very clogged up very quickly. Okay, so that's down to your personal preference, which blade you think is best for your application. So we now know how long the blade has got to be, this length between the pins. We know how many teeth per inch it is going to be. So we order one of those, we get it delivered, and then we refit it. So refitting a blade is a simple process of reversing the process of taking it apart. Now these little hooks at the end here, or these little pins, okay, they hook into here like this, and then the same on this end. Oh, okay, in you go. Then hold this with your thumb and then just tighten the handle. Okay. Tighten it up until you've got the right tension. Now the handle will bottom out, obviously, and it should give you the right amount of tension. Now, which way have I put this blade? Now, if you look at this blade very carefully, okay, you can see I've got the teeth pointing towards the handle, okay? That's the handle direction. Now it's only up to you which way you fit the blade because it can be fitted both ways, okay? So you're not doing it wrong one way or the other. But my personal preference is having the teeth pointing down towards the handle. I'll explain why. Okay, so uh, to explain the principles here of why you have it facing one way or the other, I've got two different types of saws here. Okay, uh, both of these can be used for making dovetail joints. Okay, but the design of the teeth is different. Now on this one, the teeth face forwards. Okay, so away from the handle. And on this one, the teeth face towards the handle. Okay, so this one towards the handle is a pull saw. So it cuts when you're pulling towards the handle. And this one cuts when you're pushing away. Okay, now both of these have got their benefits. Uh, but the design is slightly different, okay? Now, what difference does that make? Well, when we've got our coping saw here, okay, I've set it out so it's actually a pull saw. The difference is, if we imagine this piece of string here is my blade, okay? If I have it as a pull saw, say this is the point where I'm cutting my wood, as I'm pulling it, it remains in tension, okay? So the blade stays straight. But if I had it the other way, where it's acting as a push saw, okay, and the point of contact is here, as I cut it, the blade will tend to bend, okay? But what happens there, if the blade bends, snap, okay? That's the most common cause of snapping a coping saw blade, okay? So having it set as a pull saw, you can pull it and it stays under tension. Having it set as a push saw, you've got more chance of bending the blade. I hope that explains it quite well. Okay, so I've got it set up as a pull saw. Right, the tension is now right. Okay, it's all tightened up. Okay, this is all tight. That is ready to go. So that's about it. It's quite a simple blade change, uh, but if you do it wrong, you can end up breaking the blade. Uh, they're quite susceptible to breakage. Uh, and last thing you want to do is break a new blade. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope it explained a few things. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Now, it's entirely up to you which way you want to push. Uh... Well, my personal preference is having it with the teeth going towards the blade.